Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard to put one foot in front of the other. Ah. Hi guys, C Chronicles here. Welcome to my channel. I post fragrance related content on this platform and would very much appreciate it if you did decide to subscribe. That is, if you're not yet part of the subscribed family. To those who are subscribed, thank you so much for coming back and continuing to support this channel. I have fragrances here from the Middle East that I feel nail what they were going for. So these are fragrances that some of are going to outperform the original, some will be at par with the original, and some are twist to the original and have elements that make them maybe more wearable than the original. The very first one, guys, is going to be from Arabiat, and this is Lamsat Era. Uh, this fragrance, I don't know whether I should be saying Era or just Lamsat E. I don't know, guys. I don't know. So we know it's Lamsat, right? And it's from Arabiat. I added this one to my collection uh, recently because uh, Eagle, or uh, she uses another name, she's the one who actually recommended that I purchase this fragrance to say, try it, uh, since you're trying to add onto your Arabiat, and uh, I hope you will like it. This has got that C uh, DNA. So this is definitely going to be going for one of the C's, but I'm torn in between the original C and the C Intense. Now, both of those fragrances, guys, have leafy nuance to it. One has blackcurrant, the other one has cassis. Uh, but you will know that both of those add a tanginess to that C DNA. So whether you're looking for the actual C or the C Intense, I don't know. I do have the actual C. And I can say this one is pushing it a little more further than the actual C, especially in that vanilla is a beautifully done fragrance, nailing uh, that C DNA, guys. There is an underlying cola kick that I get from this fragrance, which actually makes it even more interesting. Interesting. So I thought it is befitting to add to some of the cheapies that are shockingly accurate when it comes to what they're going for and some even outperforming what they're going for. So Lamsar era from the house of Arabiat is the very first one on this lineup. And number two is going to be antique from the house of uh, Latafa's Nisha Marathi collection. If the bottle doesn't bother you, Guys, this is, to my nose, a fragrance that vibes way, way better than what it is going for, right? It is a, a par, but it's better, to my nose. I like how the fig interprets in this, and this is in the same vein as that Gris Chanel. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not too crazy about that Gris Chanel myself. I'm not too crazy about that DNA, but there is something in this that Latafa added. I don't know how to put it. It's warm, it's spicy, it's got that uh, fig that's, that adds a fruitiness, but it's it's more, uh, maybe more pronounced than the, the real thing. So certainly a fragrance that you may want to look at if the bottle doesn't bother you. If it does bother you, they do have another one uh, called Liam Grey. Uh, that one looks regular, so it's not going to be as scary as this. Uh, but if you are into, you know, all these, collecting all these bottles, then certainly Antique is a fragrance that I thought to drop here as one that nails what it's going for. Okay, this one stretches it a little in terms of, you know, uh, how it uh, vibes. Now, the next one is going to be a fragrance, right, that uh, might shock you seeing here, but I thought to give you a heads up when it comes to Juicy Melange from Paris Corner. There's an unmistakable uh, mossy thing in this that adds a greenness to it. It's very similar to that aura, and I have Moodless Aura in my collection. And I can tell you that that can be a fragrance that needs a little bit of getting used to, if you know what I mean. It is like a fragrance that you wouldn't just gift anybody unless you absolutely know their taste because it has that damp, earthy feel about it and it has like a pronounced greenness to it and the moss is mossing in that. You are going to get that with this, okay? It's going to give you a fruitiness, but it's going to give you that earthy serving. But more of a wearable one where you could take a chance with this one than you would with Aura. Say, for instance, you purchased it. Well, of course, one common denominator, if you are to blind buy it, would be you have to be purchasing it maybe for somebody who is accustomed to a lot of fragrances or somebody who likes mature, vibing fragrances. So it's not as youthful in smell as it looks, right? The bottle is youthful, but the smell is a little bit mature there. But it does go for that Aura DNA, giving it a twist that is more wearable. And for that, I would say I actually love this one and side by side, I'd wear this one more than the Aura because with this, I don't have to think of. But Aura, I have to think of, right? But there's nothing wrong with Aura. I'm just cluing you up here. Juicy Melange from the House of Paris Corner, guys, is the third one on this lineup. And then another 
the DNA that nailed uh, what it was going for and it actually surpassed what it was going for is when we rose or one. If you love your Delina, this t takes away nothing from Delina. What it simply does is it amplifies that Delina and Delina in itself is on fire. A lot of people that have a problem with Delina will say it's pushy, it's too much, the rhubarb is doing too much, the insincere cord is doing too much, I don't like how it's this, I don't like how it's that. If you have a problem with the original Delina, this one is going to tell you that you didn't have a problem with that one because this one's worse. This one is like on steroids when it comes to projection, when it comes to pronouncement, when it comes to how those notes interpret. It is like a concentrated version of that so they captured Delina and they went an extra mile of making sure that it's a much more concentrated version of an already concentrated fragrance. So, this I certainly thought to add here because I do atmosphere feel that it is way, way better than what it's going for. So, it's Rose or One Guys from the House of Swiss Arabian. The next recommendation, which is Athena, is a fragrance, guys, drawing inspiration from Burberry Goddess, nails the DNA, but it's here with a little quotation. I'm going to say quotation in the sense that this, I feel, is going to be the ultimate go-to if you're looking to save money. Interpraise the DNA to the T, except for the fact that it falls short a little bit in terms of lasting power, but that falling short is not too dismal, right? So this is not one that's going to be gone in like two, three, four hours. This one endures, but I I'm just saying I wore them side by side and my Burberry Goddess did do a little bit better in terms of lasting power. But in terms of telling them apart, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So kudos to Maison Alhambra for giving us our Athena, guys. If you don't have this fragrance and you're looking to uh, for an alternative to Burberry Goddess or you're just wondering how that fragrance smells like, purchase this fragrance. You may even not end up purchasing that goddess because this is probably going to just tick all your boxes to an extent of you think, hmm, do I really need the goddess? So this nails the DNA. However, I just had to take a little bit of points off it for the longevity there that uh, remember I said this is this is a video I titled better than the original. I wouldn't say this is better. I'm going to say it's a par lacking maybe two hours short uh, met to match in terms of lasting power. But it is a great fragrance nonetheless. Athena from Maison Alhambra. Next one that is at par, even a little bit better than uh, what is going for, guys, is Ajmal Evoke. Ajmal Evoke draws its inspiration from that uh, Grigio. I love Grigio. I even bought a Dior mini set because I just wanted that particular one. And it was in included in that uh, miniature set because I loved it. And I did rave about it. And you guys told me about this. And I went for this. And I was like, oh, my God. If I had known, I would have saved my points. Because out of the lot, right, I haven't reviewed uh, my discovery set uh, from Dior, I will probably drop it on C Chronicles on Scripted. Out of the lot, I think I like four, right? And that, that discovery set of their private line has got like uh, 10, you know, and they threw an 11th one as a gift. And it was just four that really did do it for me. And I would still say, say for instance, uh, I finished Evoke Gold. I would rather buy this one than go for the uh, Gree one. Cons considering the price, this one leaves nothing to the imagination, guys. You won't be missing much. It does have the projection. It does have the Okmos, so it's going to be an earthy style of fragrance. It's going to be a little bit on the green side there. It's going to be powdery as well, but that is what the DNA is all about. So if you love that, you're going to love this fragrance, guys. Definitely a contender if you're looking for a, an alternative to Gris Jo. The next one is an underrated jam. A lot of people missed this one because of the rate at which Latafa, you know, makes fragrances. But mine has been in my collection for a while. Look at how it is, you know, damaged and stuff. I didn't even know that a bottle this thick would just one drop there. And it wasn't a drop like flying from the sky. It was just, it fell, you know, it was actually on the floor and it fell to the side. And then next thing, the whole thing was chipped off. But that's not what we're on about. If you're looking for a smell alike to that BR 540, this is going to be your ultimate go-to set is going to be one-on-one -on -one with that BR540 and it's going to be more on the affordable side. I could have come here with the Club de Noe, uh because they do have that, uh, what's the name of that one? I've forgotten, right? I'm just going to put it on the side. But they do have one that smells a lot like, like BR540, but this one takes the cap because of the price point. So Ijal Aura is going to do it for you guys. If you're still on the hunt for the BR540 DNA in as much as it's been about the block and a lot of houses have gone ahead to clone it. So 
I'm not saying this is the best of the best. I'm just saying in my collection, in terms of the best, I can rate this one as one that takes the uh, trophy. Next right. up, guys, is from the House of Paris Corner. And Paris Corner did drop three of these. I'm going to bring a separate review of just the three of them because it does seem at the moment like I just talk about Sweet Surrender. But there is a reason why I talk about Sweet Surrender, Ophidian Sweet Surrender. It's because it's a beautiful, sweet gourmand fragrance. Now, the reason why I pulled out this one, well, and the reason why this one made the cut on the better than the OG uh, video, which is what I'm doing today, is in as much as it vibes the same as the brass which also draws its inspiration from Billie Eilish Eilish I didn't feel the need to bring the brass because the brass is a fragrance that over time uh, I kind of got over I don't know when it comes to you guys whether you still feel the same but this was like a beautiful take to that no brass and uh, a, 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 and a and a beautiful balance between both the no brass and the Eilish Eilish right where it's not as pushy as no brass where it's very thick in that chocolate presentation this one makes it more about the sugar so if you love gourmand you're gonna love this with wafts of some chocolate yes it gives you a citrus in here and i feel it is that citrus maybe the proportions in the uh mixing of the notes there that that switch is what made the difference so i do love uh sweet surrender guys drawing its inspiration from billy eilish eilish and it's going to be better even in lasting power better than the uh better than the original i'm just left with two guys another one from the niche emirati collection this is is Aldana drawing its inspiration from Nishani Hasebat. That DNA is not easy. So anytime you hear a reviewer saying Nishani Hasebat, it's not one I'm going to say jump and go by. You're going to get earthiness there, a dampness, a damp feel of a green moss, some patchouli, a dusty feel, even woody feel, even aromatic complex. It's a green fragrance with the patchouli doing the most in as much as it does have the pineapple and the citruses. Those are not enough, you know, to overtake the other bold notes that are in the background. But it is a unique DNA nonetheless. And I feel Latafa nailed it when it came to this one. This is unmistakable. The minute you spray it, you know that they were going for Hasabat. And if, you know, you have been watching other videos about that uh, Kaida of Hassan, the black one, that will give you wafts of Hasabat without necessarily being at par. This is at par even performance-wise because Hasabat is a commitment and that is what i get from here so aldana is certainly a good alternative to that hasifat dna the last one on the lineup guys is from the house of amaf and this is club the Noe intense women this is an intoxicating fragrance this is a bold fragrance it's built with heavy notes but the heavy notes in here seem to ease off uh, because of the inclusion of the tuffle note which adds a chocolatey nuance to this. The heavy notes I'm talking about here are the woods, there is the oud, but the oud is not so pronounced, but it is there, it's listed as a note. It has ok moss, it has patchouli, but it is that uh, truffle note, guys, that kind of pacifies everything, making these feisty notes less intimidating. So what you end up with is a rich, uh, intoxicating, grown, scent, gourmand styled as type of fragrance, but that is not juvenile. So that is why, what I like about this one, drawing its inspiration from Noir de Noir, a fragrance that in itself is a little bit pushy there for some. So I feel this rendition to my nose is way, way better and it won't leave you missing much. It won't leave you missing much because it does have the lasting power to match so if you love that noir de noir uh you know uh vibe and you're looking for something a little bit on the affordable side then you definitely go for club de noir intense women it says women but to my nose it's perfectly unisex and it's the last one guys on the lineup so that's it guys those are some of the dna's that i feel nailed what they were going for uh better than what they were going for uh or somewhat represent what they're going for in as much as they may fall short maybe in terms of performance but not dismally, if you know what I mean. Let me know in the comment section which fragrances you would recommend as, uh, you know, having nailed some of these DNAs and we can discuss further there. Remember to turn on post notifications while you're at it. That way you get to be notified anytime I upload a video. Like and share this one. And remember that smelling good is a form of good menace. Cheers.